When I'm talking about the softening of the demand today, there is one thing which is also important to get is to what we see today, mid-term, long-term, the demand, the needs of semiconductor will continue uh, to grow. When I say that, is also to take into consideration we're talking about the inventory correction that needs to happen. Lead time I, I've been reducing. That's that's also why we see we see that correction happening, allowing the correction to happen. Mm -hmm. But we also have to take to always consider that the demand will continue to grow. So it's cycles. So it's movement into a trend. Mm -hmm. So you get cycles along a trend, and it's important. And I will then in that case put myself in in customer shoes saying it's important to continue to give the visibility even if we need to be careful short term because inventory is cash and, and is money and we totally get that and we're there to support and try to help where we can there but not stopping the visibility Welcome to Afnet Silica's We Talk IoT We'll chat with innovators, experts and business owners to learn how they are implementing IoT and using data to create new business opportunities. I am your host, Stephanie Ruth Hader. Today, we pull back the curtain on the semiconductor world, uncovering its challenges, evolutions, and the innovations steering its future. I am delighted to have Gilles Beltran, president of Afnet Silica, on the show today. We will talk about grappling with global supply chain disruptions and head our way to spearheading sustainable practices. I'm super happy to have you on the show, Gilles. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm great. And thanks. If you would like to kick us off, why don't you introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little about what you do at Avnet Silica? Yep. So I'm Gilles Beltran, so I'm uh, the president of Advent Silica in Europe within the Avnet Group. I'm now in that position for about three years. I'm in distribution in Avnet Silica now since more than 21 years, where I've been running few sales position, management position as well in the executive team for, for some time. And prior to that, I was uh, working for a semiconductor manufacturer. So mm -hmm. all my life was around semiconductor when I talk about the professional uh, the professional side. You said you took the position as president three years ago. That was must have been in the middle of the pandemic then, right? Absolutely in the middle. As I would say, it was interesting. I mean, my, my, my message was to say, if I'm able to survive within the pandemic, then, then that should be fine for the rest of the... You can do anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, which apparently has been pretty successful in the last in the last three years or so, uh, the team the team made a great a great job to make it happen so that's uh, that's not just it's not me it's about team and what the team has been able to do remotely during during that uh, that period as well it definitely sounds like an interesting challenge so how would you describe the current market situation changing first i mean you were mentioning about um, covid and that period and what has been after covid mm -hmm. as well in our industry It was about supply chain shortages, perturbation, allocation in semiconductor. I mean, I think even TV has not been talking as much on semiconductor as he has been during during that period as well. Now, I mean, it's a little bit less. Right now, I mean, we see the next, I would say, change, the next step after what mm. has been experienced, which is different aspects. So... A few things on supply chain itself, because the shortages, the all the allocation, the extra demand, have been generating more inventory on the entire supply than mm -hmm. the real need for production, or okay. at least the exact need for production. So mm -hmm. after every single shortages or allocation time, uh, whether whatever is the length uh, or the amplitude of the of the situation. We always go through a correction. I mean, that's just natural. And it was forecasted. The only, let's say, unknown was how long, how big, and when. So okay. we are clearly, th this phase has been started now a few months ago, uh, where we're clearly saying uh, we, s we have a better picture. We have more. We have that inventory. We have been forced to buy those goods also in urgency to some different channels as well. So we duplicated orders when, I mean, being in the position of the customer, again, that's mm. not 
nothing to complain. But clearly now, I mean, this is the outcome of the of the situation that has been starting to try to clean, to have an inventory uh, situation better. This one has not been yet done, uh, but in the meantime, I mean, we all we all are experiencing the um, the overall economy. I think that now, mm. I mean, we are into a softening uh, moment. The overall growth, economic growth, GDP for the world is uh, softening, uh, even to some extent in some countries like Germany for 2023 is forecasted to be recession, which we haven't heard that uh, that word for a long period of time. And China today, when we look, it's also when we look at it from a global perspective, is extremely soft. Mm-hmm. It doesn't doesn't look to be evolving massively next year as well. So all that overall economy is also driving some change in our industry. I mean, the, the interest rate are going up, so the the money is costing a higher price today, and we need and we know we need money for everything, and including mm-hmm. our industry. And when we go a little bit more into into our industry, we have one indicator, which is called PMI, which is the ma- the manufacturing index. Okay. Not just electronic, but but about the manufacturing industry. And that one is now for a few quarters below 50 in most of the European country, also globally as well. Mm-hmm. And when it's uh, 50, it means, or below 50, it means there is a market contraction. So m- meaning as okay. well, the demand now on top of, just the inventory correction, we are also seeing some demand softening, uh, mm-hmm. which then is a combination of the two for the industrial world. And and I will just maybe differentiate this because if we look for the semiconductor purely uh, today, when we are listening, reading the earning calls of the semiconductor manufacturer, they start being a little bit more positive for the next quarters. And again, this is a global picture. Okay. The revenue quarter after quarter overall of the semiconductor uh, world um, volume has been decreasing for now about 18 months. And last quarter was the first one when it was slightly positive quarter over quarter. But as I mentioned, is is global, is worldwide, is all type of product. Um, consumer products have been starting, I mean, many is a slight haptic, Suddenly, going with the end of the year with uh, the production for Christmas, like like we mm-hmm. have the seasonalities in uh, in our industry as well. So, with this, the semiconductor manufacturer are giving some positive outlook along the next quarters. But the mix of hand market uh, will suddenly be evolving compared to what it was. Industry remained quite solid over the last quarters why consumer dropped massively mm-hmm. and i think the consumer will go up again i don't know to which extent but at least we'll go up and industry will start i mean suffering a little bit softening a little bit but the overall demand when we look about semiconductors seems to be going in an increasing uh, mode again mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. We, it's very hard just to say how much it will be but it will be few percent the, the analyst Today are giving few percent, few percent okay. for that. And one of the reasons today about the industry is, I would I would just name two of the main drivers of the overall industry: mm-hmm. uh, automotive and yes. the pure industrial uh, systems. I would say infrastructure mm-hmm. and what, what is called smart manufacturing, which are the the industries of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So automotive today has been clearly driving the the I mean a strong driver of the demand. Uh, yeah, the content seems... of electronic is massively increasing in the car and will continue with electrification, but not only with all the connection, the safety yeah. and everything. Yeah. I mean, you need you need electronic to uh, to be able to do that. Uh, I truly believe as well that the number of new cars sold will continue to decrease. So the mix of the two will still make a market that will grow, but okay. I mean, mm-hmm. clearly will depend on how quick the decrease of new sold car will will be. And I would say, I think right now, I mean, we see, again, car manufacturing, manufacturer, sorry, putting some rebate to sell some cars, even some mm-hmm. new cars, or even selling the one that they have on the on the park. So we see dimension a little bit, um, a little bit changing, changing for that. So that's why, I mean, I also, mm-hmm. I think that increase will slightly slow down, but still positive. The industry as well is... Uh, it's still positive because it's usually big project requiring mm. a lot of money. 
sure. which have been financed earlier with okay. a lower cost of money. So I think now, I mean, it's going to the to the achievement of those projects. And I think the new project with the new with the, the cost of money today are delayed. They are not mm. they're not going to be cancelled, but delayed in terms of of decision as well. So that okay. that's where. The demand is slightly lower based on that because there are some uh, more discussions and delay yeah. in terms of decisions uh, in that uh, in that market as well. That's interesting because what I've been reading, I think, for several months now, that especially the automotive industry uh, have a high demand for IoT devices, semiconductors, chips, and there seems to be a shortage and they can't get enough of them. And it seems like that the coverage on this topic is that actually the demand should be much higher than what you are describing. So I think that's interesting. How do you explain this? It has been, I think it has been the case, but the shortage, so you might still find some pockets, don't get me okay. wrong. I mean, power mm -hmm. is one of them. If you think about electrification, the mm -hmm. big, this one is still a technology that is under, I mean, massive demand, not just because of automotive, also We can discuss later about, I say, new technology for power efficiency. I mean, that mm. we will be using in our in our day life. So this technology is more under constraint. But if you think about the um, combustion engine today, there is almost no on, yeah. on. Even if you put a little bit of hybridation today, automotive is they are producing without the final demand as well, or being sure for the final demand. So you mentioned the supply chain issues over the last couple of years. What changes have you made? You mentioned that you worked on inventory. What other steps have you taken to mitigate these issues? Just maybe to follow up on what you were saying regarding automotive as well. Mm, okay. Um, mm -hmm. The electronic will be pervasive everywhere. So mm. on automotive, but uh, on mega trends, we are talking about the um, power efficiency, how we'll be consuming energy tomorrow. I mean, you mm -hmm. need electronic to be yes. more efficient as well. And there will a lot of new connectivity is in it, security. So we'll require electronic. So, and more electronic product. And into it, there will be each single electronic product will require more semiconductor content, mm -hmm. value percentage wise of the value of the electronic product. So when I'm talking about the softening of the demand today, there is one thing, which is also important to get is to what we see today, mid-term, long-term, the demand, the needs of semiconductor will continue uh, to grow. When I say that, is also to take into consideration we're talking about the inventory correction that needs to happen. Lead time I, I've been reducing. That's, that's also why we see, we see that correction happening, allowing the correction to happen. Mm -hmm. But we also have to take to always consider that the demand will continue to grow. So it's cycles, so it's movement into a trend. Mm -hmm. So you get cycles along a trend. And it's important, and I will then in that case put myself in, in customer shoes, saying it's important to continue to give the visibility, even if we need to be careful short term because inventory is cash and, and is money. And we totally get that, and we're there to support and try to help where we can there. But not stopping the visibility Because it's just to put the foundation of your your question, the, the, the mm -hmm. question you uh, you just raised. Tomorrow, if we want to improve the supply chain, knowing that the demand, that's why semiconductor manufacturing manufacturers, so we have been continuously investing in your capacity. So afterwards, it's never linear. That's an issue. So you get investment, you get big volume, maybe too much volume, and then step by step, that volume becomes fully used and then you need to reinvest to invest again so that's always by kind of wave when you have those impact of of investment but it will require continuous investment from the mm -hmm. semiconductor manufacturer to be able to answer the this evolution into the electronic in the world and the semiconductor in the electronic okay so that's why i'm saying don't never stop giving the visibility because One of the name of the game will be for the semiconductor manufacturer to produce the right product with the right volume at the right time. So it's when I'm say that is very the, I mean theoretical. I totally agree. But uh, sounds very easy. It, it should. <laughs> it's not. It's not uh, right <laughs> because it requires a lot of things that have been changing. So you you mm. mentioned about the impact. 
of the last two, three years, I think the industries, and I would put them in plural, also understood that they were not too much controlling their supply chain, at least mm. on the semiconductor, the electronic side. Uh, why? Because for certainly a long time, there have been few perturbations, but never to the point where that those shortages was impacting or was going to impact massively revenue of big corporation, then not escalating to C-level or CEOs. Where? Because we got CEOs of big companies, big corporation involved into calls with semiconductor uh, manufacturer just to understand when they will get goods for trying to plan the revenue they will be able to do and the production they will be. So mm -hmm. they understood that those small black pieces, not, I mean, <laughs> maybe the cost is few euro, a few ten euro for some, maybe a little bit higher, but could be blocking the sale, I mean, of trucks or of, of uh, agricultural vehicles, which cost a few ten thousand euro as well. So mm. that consciousness has been has been happening. And clearly, to be able to drive the message that I was just giving or the sentence that I was just giving to give the visibility of the supplier or the manufacturer to produce the right element or the right product or the right volume at the right time is about data, is about transparency, is about accuracy of what we, what mm -hmm. we can try to plan. So that's why I was talking about visibility, but it's also how you can get those data properly. And and I will say one of the elements that is to me very important on what we have been doing over the last years and what we need to be doing mm -hmm. now and, and in the next month and, and quarters is about transparency of the supply chain. Because if you need to get the right data, you need to put trust ahead of anything else, mm -hmm. which means you need to get the right information from the customer to us, mm -hmm. which is not duplicating the demand to say, okay, I, I hold them all so that I'm, I make sure that I potentially get a little bit more than what I should need. Or I put it earlier because if I have the demand earlier, I may have a chance to get it in the time I want, even if there is some delay, which mm -hmm. then is not a trustable information. And again, I'm not blaming uh, when I say it's what happened, mm. but the if we want to be more efficient, we need to, we need to build trust. And the only way to build trust is transparency. We need mm -hmm. to get transparent information to give transparent feedback between us and the customers and same with the with the manufacturer our, our suppliers as well. Yes. And that's something that I I think has been evolving in the last years mm -hmm. where the consciousness has been happening. Some big corporations have been putting some uh, supply chain model evolving and you can only have one version of the truth <laughs> if you place orders to one channel only. Okay. I mean, when I, because otherwise it becomes very complex to get yeah. one version of the truth because we also put on our side a lot of analytics behind and we know that when discussing with some um, big corporation when we get the, their data we are questioning saying why you, you are telling us that you need to produce that amount of volume of that product and when we concatenate all the needs of the different partners you work with mm -hmm. i have either 10 percent less or 15 percent less or 10 or 15 percent more okay because that's also how you can get the right mm. outcome or the right information towards the, man, the semiconductor manufacturer for mm. producing the right the right products at the right time. So that's mm -hmm. also how we have been more and more involved into that. Mm -hmm. My main okay. concern, and I will be clear, I think most of the corporation understood that. Some corporation have been clearly going into projects to put those new supply chain model in re in reality, and we mm -hmm. are already ramping up with some of them. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that now with lead time reducing and having much less issues in supply chain that we had in the last two, three years, that some companies just say, okay, oh, it, it was important, but now I don't have any issue anymore. I don't put, okay. it, I don't put it in place. Okay. Or it's lower in terms of priority for the company for a mm. good reason. But as I mentioned, what is visible is the semiconductor market will continue to grow. So we yes. will get with those cycles, new period of tight supply. 
Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure that there will be a kind of priority, natural priority on the one who put the investment to put those new model in place because that's money to invest on time and people will mm-hmm. will get more priority because they will be able to get to to give more visibility and the right visibility in terms of good they will need. Again, as I said, continue giving visibility is important, but also making sure we don't deprioritize some of those projects because that will be the hurt of the ability to give the right visibility to more okay. to the uh, to the producers. We will take a short break. Stay with us. We will be hearing from our guests very shortly. This podcast is brought to you by Afnet Silica, the engineers of evolution. We help you bring secure, intelligent, and connected products to market. If you want to learn more about us, we have put information and links in this episode show notes. And you can also connect with us on LinkedIn or afnet-silica.com. That's A-V-N-E-T-S-I-L-I-C-A.com. Are you also noticing shifting needs on the customer front? What is, is there something that changes, something that you've noticed, um, something interesting? I would say no major shift. I mean, what okay. we see today is evolution of technology. I was mentioning power. We see that power because it, it's driven by megatrend. The yeah. world needs to consume less energy whatever the energy will be, but uh, but needs to consume less the energy. Mm. So either you you have few things. I mean, you, if you need to consume less, either you get product devices that are more efficient and you mm. need in that case power management to be better, or you use different type of uh, energy sources like electrification as well. And it's again, or solar panel or wind or, but you need to transform that energy into electricity or at least mm. current and and with that you need power power management and that demand or that technology is increasing and that's still the one to be back on your question regarding the uh, the automotive this is still the one under pressure yeah more or less i mean it's a little bit better than what it was i mean that technology is almost sold for the next two three years if i'm mm. exaggerating a little bit and they are still investing into mm. the capacity but The demand is increasing faster than the than the capacity can can increase here. Sure. So that's one of the the evolution that we saw in terms of technology. In terms of other ones, we see and we have been hearing. I'm sure that uh, the one who were impacted heard about TSMCs and uh, and companies like that were giving the wafer to the semiconductor manufact- manufacturer, and those technology become more and more. Uh, let's say smaller, thinner, and powerful in terms of data data an, uh, analysis and uh, and the ability to 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 drive those data. And this technology is more and more difficult to implement into electronic system. So one of the other move that we see for processors, or we can call them processors, is mm. instead of doing companies and all companies to do their own design meaning putting all the drawing, the boards, mm. buying the components, uh, having somebody who is manufacturing the board. We see companies going into, we say, system solution. So buying some uh, macro components, some small mm-hmm. systems that they put together and they really focus on their expertise. And that's things that have been evolving because I believe the cost of those system or subsystem is going down because of the investment that will be needed uh, to do that is also increasing so you okay. get a kind of um, balance level which is which is going higher in terms of uh, of volume so more companies instead of designing their own products will buy subsystem to aggregate and to integrate their own their own system where they mm. may put software uh, on it but then really focusing all their domain of expertise and the value they will be bringing with their products. Everybody has to be giving where they have the added value, which is where where they are expert. And, and we see that shift happening more. We're, we're talking about the semiconductor manufacturer earlier. Their expertise is to design and produce mm-hmm. a semiconductor product. Our customer expertise, I mean, is their product and how they 
the, the, add, the addition or the value mm -hmm. they bring with their product as well. The what we call contract manufacturers, EMSs, their expertise is to produce the bolt. So getting all the elements and produ produce the yeah. bolt test efficiently with the volume. So we get those expertise into it. And ours is more and more technology understanding. We have more experts in technology, in power, in software, in security, in connectivity, mm -hmm. and also into the supply chain, which is linked to a supply chain, not only what is supply chain in the food distribution. It's different to the electronic or semiconductor distribution as well. Mm -hmm. It's not big shift, but is clearly when I'm talking about the, the semiconductor manufacturer, they have been now pushing more and more of the supply chain they were doing on their own to or yeah. to work with uh, with us, for yeah. instance, because they said this is not our expertise. Let's it's hard to get resources to mm. form them. Yeah. Let's really get those resources doing what we do best, which is designing and creating those products. When you say it's not a big shift, but I think this this little change of mindset will will have a big impact, won't it? Yes. Yeah, so absolutely, interesting. Absolutely. We've touched the topic of sustainability several times over our discussion. Um, can you share some examples or initiatives that you have undertaken, making technology more sustainable or being the climate change as a huge issue for the whole global community yeah. and technology? And we've had this on this podcast several times that technology actually is a huge factor in helping climate change problems as well. So, Electronic will be, will be a major element of it. I would say the first is what we can, what we can do as a company, as Avnet, mm -hmm. as Avnet Silica into it. I mean, already when I'm, to I'm talking about warehouse or, I mean, when I was mentioning some systems, some boards, we have one entity, which is called Avnet Embedded, who is doing those boards, designing and making mm -hmm. some solutions for customers. With this, we, we just, and we're going to be doing the opening in a few weeks of a new plant of Avnet Embedded, uh, doing that production and, uh, and thus design. And that new location is more, more or less, yeah, is, is almost energy autonomous. We put a lot of solar panel, also how you get energy from, from the ground. So trying to be more efficient with this. So it's almost, Carbon neutral, and I would say, I would say for for that, in, I mean for that plant, we also are building a new warehouse in Germany, and that one will get much more weight of uh, green energy than what we had up to now. So that's also one element where we try to to have our our footprint into a greener supply chain. There, the other the other piece is, I mean, whatever we can, if we can mm. use electrical or green greener vehicles for the, to carry the goods that will be that will be things will be uh, will clearly be looking but all electronics today will will also clearly be helping on all of that i mean when we when we talked about how to implement better supply chain we will also try to move less goods uh, to location mm -hmm. where it's not uh, where it's not needed the accuracy of the the information should a law to optimize the volume of the goods uh, traveling as well. Step by step, we need to optimize the routes of the of the goods as well, because today is not. So that's part of how we will be participating into that. And uh, and again, more you need information on anything. I mean, traceability of the of the goods when they are delivered. We can also, for insurance standpoint, get some trackers into it just to understand if they got shock or, or thing mm -hmm. like that. I mean. More and more information will require, you need, if you get data, you need sensors. Mm. If you need to collect the data, you need to connect those sensors and drive the information to a certain point when the analysis would be, either locally or centrally as well. So all of that required, let's say, semi semiconductor and electronic into it. So this is the interesting piece. Even us into that electronic environment is... Even if we can say, and, and I'm not saying the opposite, that is not the greenest energy uh, or the, the, the greenest industry in the world. However, this is heavily participating mm -hmm. uh, to become greener tomorrow. So that's where the, again, we, we were talking about balance and equilibrium. This is necessary to, 
go and drive uh, for a better and a greener environment tomorrow as well. Even if the if you look into the industry itself, this is not the greenest uh, in the world. And I'm not going to be to say something something different here, but. Uh, yeah. That's where the complexity and the the interesting point is. Even from an external standpoint, doesn't look green, but it's driving much more, let's say, positive impact than than the negative it will be. It would be doing at the end. Absolutely. Are there any upcoming trends or technologies that you are particularly excited about? I would say we are talking about everybody being connected. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of things will be connected. So that's uh, how we will be living with more of that connection together with being connected physically as well with people, not just through. So that that's a, mm. it's not, it's not a big thing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, AI is one, but I think we need to be, it's massive in terms of impact, but in massive, when I say it's massive, it is massive on how you need to control it. So one of the next big things is certainly that, but mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know how things will need to be controlled because that's, uh, that can have massive impact. Yeah. positive or negative or direct or indirect. And that's things that are somewhere fascinating and scary. So that's where, I mean, those type of things will be, will be some of the next, uh, is it, we'll call, it will be called humanity or in, in, in <laughs> that case. So let's see, but, uh, but that's, that's where somewhere is going to be fascinating, but I don't have one, uh, which okay. except AI, which clearly will be massively disruptive, but the usage then will be, will be very diverse as well. So that's, uh, mm -hmm. and even on things that we, that I personally don't know or don't, don't even, don't even think. So that's, um, that's going to be one, um, one of the major step of tomorrow. <laughs> The next five years will be really exciting to see how many use cases emerge and what people will do with it. Mm. As you said, everybody of us, I guess, experiences with the internet it has started out really hopeful and really good. And now it has also dark sides, doesn't it? That's to me fascinating in terms of what's going to be, what's going to be tomorrow, how electronic would be. They, it's also important that they they integrate what's going to be the impact and the need of electronic and I would say hardware combined with software to make things happening better tomorrow. And I think the impact that will be needed here should be a message for new generation to come and join and join that, that journey uh, with us, whether it's with suppliers, uh, with distributors or with our customers as well. I will be talking for the entire industry here, but it's really, I mean, it's really a place to be. There is some bright future, bright usage and new things that we even don't know today. So I will really, I mean, one of the message is really, I mean, welcome, welcome new, new generation to join us and, uh, yeah. and drive what they really have in mind with getting, uh, in a better environment. Uh, yes, but they need, they need to be really embracing, embracing it and and being the actor of that new environment they want they want to build and not only just by being the enjoyable side but also mm. what's going to be required to make it to make it happen and an electronic will be will be surely uh, one one big element so i would say welcome join join the electronic industry uh, doesn't look sexy like that but uh, but it's <laughs> uh, it's massively uh, massively important and and impactful uh, for getting a, a better environment and a greener environment tomorrow. Fantastic. And it will never get boring. <laughs> More than 20 years. Yeah. Uh, I never, I never, I never get bored. Uh, yeah. And I don't, I'm not expecting to be before getting to retirement someday when it comes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have asked you for the, for your soundtrack. The question would have been what, what would be the soundtrack to your job or to, to this episode if you had to choose some songs. So we, as Avnet Silica, we have been now in the industry for uh, 20 years. So we did, we did our 20 years anniversary last year, mm -hmm. uh, where all the employee came into, uh, I mean, we, we, we have been celebrating that. As I was just mentioning about the industry in which we are and, and, and what we see ahead, ahead of us, the song was right here, right now. And I think that's, I mean, also, Uh, following up to what we uh, what we were just uh, discussing uh, before in terms of uh, the industry and what could be the message, it's about that. I think I think it's right here right now. It's the 
mm-hmm. is the right place, the right uh, the right industry uh, for driving what what we want the world the world to be tomorrow. Cool. Before I let you go, I have to include this. We have a common interest. Um, we are both rugby fans. I hope I don't over exaggerate or under exaggerate. I'd be interested in your rugby World Cup prediction. Who will meet in the finals? <laughs> So being being French and uh, being living in the in the rugby city I would say in Europe uh, <laughs> even even if I'm sure that uh, a lot of people will uh, will not be in agreement with me there there are prediction and the uh, and I think there is a unique opportunity for the for the French team to Uh, be looking for the uh, Webelis uh, Cup uh, this year. That that will be my prediction. I will I will clearly uh, heavily be supporting that. I mean, yeah. Do you think the there's a chance for France against South Africa in the finals? Then course, we have to then we course, have to talk again. Course. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I will I will just take another piece because as I said, is to lose <laughs> this uh, this year uh, the. European Championship became a little bit more European because some mm. South African uh, team were part of the competition, and uh, I would say might. I think that's a, it. Will be an interesting game in 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 all in all cases. But then I'm not. I'm a little bit biased when I say that. Are you going to the World Cup? Do you have tickets? No, I don't have tickets. Yeah, ah. so I will be. Uh, I will be uh, watching them all with uh, with friends. Uh, sure. But uh, but not in the uh, not in the stadium this time. Yeah, I will go to Paris on Monday and enjoy some time in Paris. And then we go to Lille for Scotland versus Romania, which were the only tickets left. And then we will go <laughs> to Marseille for Springboks versus Tonga. That should ah, be, this one that should be, be uh, fun, be I guess. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And then we will be in Marseille for a couple of days and then we go home. So, yeah. so I, I would say enjoy <laughs> France in that case. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gilles, for being on the show. It has been terrific chatting with you about the industry and rugby <laughs> and all the important parts in between. It was fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks very much. This was Avnet Silica's We Talk IoT. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating. Talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.